Hey, greetings everyone. Welcome back to the channel and welcome if it's your first time here. My name is Johnny. I am an artist. I don't know why I do videos like this, but I do. Anyway, check out my three playlists if you've never been here before. Uh, a bug out necklace. I know that's kind of a weird topic. I, I, I think I'll put that in the title, bug out necklace. Never seen that before, never heard of it before. These things are, are hanging from a doorknob on the house. The concept is if you had to run out in a hurry, of course you would grab your bug, bug out bag, but this is something you could throw over your, um, over your neck or over your head, tuck it underneath your jacket and off you go kind of a thing. Uh, I'm gonna show you what I have in my bug out necklace and this is going to be a good video where we can open up the conversation you guys can let me know what you would change what you would add subtract etc and uh, let's go through these items here uh, let's start off number one with the blade i chose the falkneven r2 scout i've got so many knives to choose from you you've from you you've from you you've you've must have seen some of my videos by now um i've got all these other neck knives that would be really close but i chose the r2 for a couple of specific reasons number one the blade itself is extremely stout it throws sparks, like I'll show you in a second. It's got LMAX steel, which is a pretty good steel. It's going to hold an edge for quite a long time. Fills the hand. Got a little bit of a bonker going on here, so that's kind of a good thing. Again, it's very, very comfortable and stout. I've got a lot of other knives to choose from, but I like this one. And I, I find that stropping the um, convex... To be quite easy. I can always bring this back to hair popping quick and easy. So that's one reason why I chose the R2 Scout. Um, on the R2 Scout I've got a ferrocene rod, magnesium sticks, a um, another little mini ferrocene rod, a whistle which I don't have to take off, a little uh, Suntu, Sunto compass which is a clipper, that can come off. I've got some redundancies going on here, a lot of that. Uh, the whistle, again, is it's affixed to the actual sheath. So I just put my mouth to it. And it works fine. I don't have to take it off. And I probably could glue on a piece of metal, or not metal, leather back here. Just for a, a little strop. I'll probably get to that. And I've got... Tons of paracord, and I've got a comfort thing on the back. I think I've made a video on how to do these on the back of your neck. And this is adjustable as well. So right now everything is long, so it's easy over my head. And then I can always adjust later down the road to accommodate, depending on what I'm wearing. So that's the blade of choice. Again, you guys are going to have different ideas, and um, I'd like to see what you uh, have to say. A compass. I chose this compass as the main compass over several others to choose from. I'm going to do a compass video very soon. I've got a few. Uh, this one's got the little uh, screwdriver in here to adjust the declination. It's um, an MC2, I believe. I like it for many reasons. Got a little magnifying glass, straight edge. The compass works very, very good. Of course, you got a, sing a signaling mirror. Also, if you've got something stuck in your eye and you need to take a closer look, this is a great tool for that. And of course, it's a, a really good compass. And the other reason I chose it is because it's generally thin, thinner than some of the other military compasses I have. And I believe this one is going to cover a lot of the bases. So that's why I chose this compass. Uh, moving on to this other thing here. I've got this other necklace on this. Um, it's like a fire cord or something like that. It's got all kinds of uses. Let's see if I can show one of them. So assuming you don't have too much in the way of ignition, you can use this, you know, to start a fire. It'll stay lit for a long, long time. And uh, it's got tinder in there, so you could use this, again, to put underneath and start things so you're not using up all of your 
butane or whatever. And there's several other uses for this cord. Uh, this stuff here is really, really bright and it's got some reflective in it as well. And I've got it kind of here and there. I got a cheapo carabiner, nothing special, but it does lock and I like that. Bic lighter, some reflective type uh, tape so that if you drop it in the dark, if you hit it with a flashlight, you will see it. Some duct tape, many, many uses. And I've got this on a piece of paracord, which I've got it tied in such a way that I can't accidentally light it because it's being choked here. And just on the off chance, I accidentally depress that. I don't want to kill all the fluid. So I just do one of these and it's good to go. And there you go. So another way to light a fire, bring everything in here. Okay, so this is a glow-in-the-dark Victorian Ox uh, classic, I believe. So we got some scissors. I use these for everything, very, very handy. Trimming the nails and uh, just general things like that. A file, a little knife. I use the file a lot, again, primarily for this, and I've knocked down edges on pieces of plastic and stuff like that. Um, all right, so then we got a little, a little mini flashlight. This is like an Olight. Um, it had some kind of reflective tape, but it's starting to wear off. It's on also a glow-in-the-dark kind of a uh, lanyard of some kind. And, of course, everything glows in the dark here. Of course, the no number one reason for all that is just so I don't lose it. Got a P38 on here. It's a classic P38. It's the real deal. Takes up very little real estate. Very light. Can always open up a can of beans. And some more of this uh, fire cord. And again, another ferrocium rod here. If I can get it open. So another ferro rod with a striker, but I really do like the R2. It does throw amazing sparks. May as well show you it in action. Try not to burn the place down, but it really does. It really sends the sparks, you know, very little effort. And that's important, I think, especially if you're under stress. I, I tried using this before and I found it to be very stressful. But I like the package. I like how small it is. Um, again, everything can come apart. You could take this off and put it in your pocket. Everything's removable. Nothing's permanent. Can't remember the company that made this. Some of you might recognize this. Uh, it was an Amazon purchase. It was pretty cheap. So yeah, once again, everything can come off and you can move it around. And that's pretty much it. I'm thinking there's, there's things that could be added, but I didn't really want to have too much weight. So I was just trying to think of, okay, this is an emergency. I need to be able to start a quick little fire, uh, maybe open up a can of peas or beans or corn or whatever the case might be, some easy navigation, some signaling perhaps. Um, this thing could get really overboard and really, really heavy, and I didn't really want to do that because, of course, I've got a bug out bag with all kinds of other things in there. So it's something that hangs at the door, easy on, easy off. Um, if someone was to, you know, uh, enter without your permission, it makes a big rattling noise at the door as well. So it's a little bit of a security. Thought I'd throw this out there and share this with you. Let me know what you think. Is a bug out necklace something that people should talk about more? Bye for now.